when we're thinking about different ways to get compost out as a liquid, there are lots and lots of different options and opportunities. So you can make a compost tea. So these are generally brewed. So you, you would need some kind of system that enables you to aerate and bubble air through that system while you're adding compost and different types of foods. So this might have been brewed, or in this case, it was brewed for 24 hours. You might brew up to 36 hours, depending on what your goals are. And then this needs to be applied very quickly. Like typically compost teas, we wanna be applying within four hours. You don't ever want a compost tea to run out of oxygen. It's very critical that we are thinking about UV light, which can kill microbiology. So we're applying compost teas later in the evening and on cloudy days or rainy days, that's when a compost tea would come in. Now you can brew specific organisms based on the types of foods that you're feeding. Uh, and so people really like these compost teas. You could add in yucca or different types of sticking agents to make sure that this is sticking to your leaves. These are probably my least favorite in terms of how do we manage this, especially on large scale, um, when it's so important to keep this aerated. Uh, this one here is what we call a extract. So what we've done is actually run water through compost that's finished. And you can do this with compost or vermicast. So having equipment that will either pump water or air and run water continually through, and you can extract and then store some of this material. Um, if you're using finished vermicast or compost, this could be stored up to six months to a year, which makes a lot of flexibility if we just want a stored product. Now what this product is concentrated in is the metabolites or the byproducts of that composting process. So as long as you can test the source of the compost that you're using and you know that you're using really, really good quality compost that's had a lot of nematodes, protozoa and fungi in it, then this will contain all those different types of metabolites. We can then sieve this and we can put that through a conventional sprayer. We'll be able to spray this without blocking. My favorite is the compost slurry. What we're doing with a slurry is we'll actually put composting materials, we might even put seeds, we might put minerals out into an agitated machine that keeps this aerated as we go out to spray into the fields. We have a fifth of an inch nozzle size on those spray jets and we can spray up to a fifth of an inch in size compost. So we're basically putting the home of the microbiology out with the microbes. Again, really important to know what's the quality of the compost that you're using. And with all of these, really critical to know what's the quality of the water that you're using. So we find if you have very hard water above 150 parts per million, we can see issues around nutrient availability or the efficacy of biology. If your water is treated with uh, chlorine or fluoride, that can also impact on the quality of what we're doing and it might kill your microbes. So being able to just basically look through a microscope and assess are the microbes living through this process. There's living microbiology in this one, but also the metabolites. And we're seeing some remarkable results with this and we're applying it anywhere from two to 35 pounds an acre of fungal dominant, high quality compost and seeing some extraordinary res results in terms of plant quality, um, in terms of some of our soil measures. So yeah, these are some simple ways we can extract compost and then be able to use a little to go a very long way.